dear learners welcome to the course antenna sun microwave engineering in this video i will be explaining directional coupler i will explain the definition basic parameters types s parameters and applications of directional couplers in this video Directional coupler is a four port microwave passive device. It is used for coupling lone fraction of microwave power to a coupled port in the axillary line from the main line. Directional coupler consists of two waveguides, primary waveguide and secondary waveguide. Otherwise called as main arm and axillary arm. Directional coupler is generally used to measure incident power if it is a unidirectional coupler and it may be a bidirectional it is used for measuring both incident and reflected power. This figure shows the directional coupler. You see here there are four ports, port 1 and 2. It is a primary waveguide. The secondary waveguide which is attached to the primary waveguide. Here the axillary arm. The port is port 3 and port 4. Output is taken from port 4. This is the axillary output. The port 3 is match determination. And these two waveguides are attached through a common uh, hole. The common slot or aperture or opening or hole is provided between the two waveguides. Generally, there are four parameters to analyze the characteristics of directional coupler. The parameters are coupling factor, directivity, isolation, return loss. So, this figure 2 illustrates the symbol of directional coupler. So from this we can uh, identify which port is uh, coupled port, which one is isolated. The port 1, we give the input to the port 1 and uh, port 2 we will get the output and in the port 4 we get the coupled uh, energy that is a fraction of microwave power. In the port 3 there will be no output uh, here. First parameter is a coupling parameter. The coupling factor it is represented as C. Uh, generally it is measured in decibels. Coupled factor is a measure of how much of incident power is being sampled. It is the ratio of power levels in main and axillary waveguides. Coupling factor represents the amount of power received at the output of the axillary line in terms of power transmitted in main line. So this figure, the symbol it illustrates the uh, coupled power which is traveling in forward direction in the secondary view. Right? Let us consider the incident power is P1 in the main guide and the power coupled in the axial waveguide is uh, P4. Now we can write it as C in decibels is equal to 10 log of P1 by P4. Logarithmic base is 10. Another parameter is directivity. It is represented as a D. It is also expressed in decibels. Directivity is a measure of how well the directional coupler distinguishes between the forward and the reverse traveling power. It is the ratio of the forward coupled power at axillary waveguide to the reverse power at axillary waveguide. That means how much amount of power is traveling in the forward direction. Directivity represents the amount of attenuation that the directional coupler offers to the user. Ideally, it should be infinity, that is, a power output at port 3 is 0. 
to directivity d in decibels equal to 10 log of p4 by p3 to the base 10. P, p4 is the power output at uh, port 4. P3 is the reverse power at axillary port P3. P4 is the uh, forward power traveling in the forward direction. P3 is the power traveling in the reverse direction. Another parameter is isolation which is represented as I that is also expressed in decibels. Isolation me measures the directional properties of direction coupler. Isolation represents the amount of isolation between two ports in a directional coupler. Ideally, it should be infinity, that is power output at port 3 is 0. It is defined as a ratio of incident power at main waveguide to the reverse power at the axillary waveguide. That means the ratio of P1 by P3. Generally, we represent in decibels. I is equal to 10 log of P1 by P3 to the base 10. P1 is the incident power and P3 is the uh, reverse power at axillary waveguide. Next term is return loss. Return loss is also the ratio of the incident power to the reflected power and main arm. Next we will discuss the various types of directional coupler. Generally there are three types of directional couplers. Waveguide directional coupler, coupled to coaxial or strip line coupler, branch line coupler. The waveguide directional coupler may be uh, one hole or multi hole directional coupler. One hole coupler is generally called as bed hole directional coupler. Waveguide directional coupler is commonly consists of two waveguides coupled through one or multi hole in a common broad ball. It is two waveguides are attached, commonly connected through a uh, hole. It may be a single hole or multi hole. This figure illustrates various types of waveguide directional coupler. The figure A it represents two hole directional coupler. Uh, you note down here there are two uh, holes are uh, uh, provided commonly between the two waveguides, primary waveguide and the secondary waveguide. Two holes are placed apart, lambda g by 4. Here in the figure B, there are four holes are provided between the two waveguides. And the third type is scavenger coupler. Here two waveguides are arranged perpendicular. And the fourth one is bed hole directional coupler. It is common hole. Here we observe that a single opening or the hole is provided. Next I will explain the working principle of two hole directional coupler in detail. This figure shows the two hole directional coupler. Already we discussed if the input is given at port 1, we get the output at port 2. Some part of the energy is uh, coupled to port 4 there will be no output appears at port 3 port 3 output is 0 how we get uh, 0 output at port 3 so here two holes are uh, provided it is placed apart a distance l is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda g by 4 so it is a hole or slot or uh, aperture or opening whatever it is generally we called as a, a slot or hole let us consider port input uh, power is given at port 1 first we assume that incident power is at port 1 it is traveling towards port 3 and the fraction of power is uh, radiates 
into secondary waveguide through the slot A. So that uh, radiating energy is divided into two parts. Part of the energy is traveling towards port 4 and the part of the energy is traveling to port 3. And here this power traveling towards port 2 is again radiates into uh, second slot B. So here in the slot B part of the energy is traveling towards port 4 and some part is uh, traveling towards port 3. Now the energy traveling towards port 3 from slot A and slot B. The energy traveling from slot A and slot B both are out of phase. So therefore these two waves are getting cancelled. Therefore we get a zero output at port 3. But the wave traveling in the forward direction that is towards port 4 these two waves are in phase. So therefore these two signals are getting added. We get the output at port 4. So now the fraction of power appeared at port 4. So this is the working principle of directional coupler. So power incident at port 1, we get output at port 2. Some part of the energy appear at port 4. Next we are going to derive the scattering matrix of a directional coupler. So already we know that the scattering uh, matrix, uh, how we write it. Uh, directional coupler is a four port network, so therefore uh, four cross four matrix for directional coupler. S matrix is a four cross four matrix. So, equation one represents the S matrix for four cross four. So we are going to derive generally how we derive the scattering matrix. Apply the properties of the scattering matrix. And also we should apply the characteristics of that particular microwave device. Here we are going to apply the general characteristics of the directional coupler. So in a directional coupler all four ports are perfectly matched to the junction. Perfectly matched we assume that there will be no reflection. So therefore S11, S22, S33 and S44 is equal to 0. And then we consider the symmetry properties. Sij is equal to Sji. That means even if you interchange the input and output terminals, there will be no change in the transmission characteristics. So therefore, S23 is equal to S32, S34 is equal to S43, S13 is equal to S31, S41 is equal to S14, S24 is equal to S42. Next, there is no coupling between port 1 and 3. So therefore, how we represent uh, mathematically? S13 yes, is equal to S31 yes, is equal to 0. That means there is no coupling between port 1 and 3. S24 yes, is equal to S42 yes, is equal to 0 means there will be no coupling between port 2 and 4. Now we are going to substitute the equations 2, 3 and 4 in equations 1. We will get equation 6. You observe that the diagonal elements are 0. It means that it is perfectly matched. Scattering matrix and the complex conjugate of matrix. The product of these two matrix is equal to identity. Unit matrix. Here you observe that the diagonal elements of unity. Now we take the product of R1C1 and R1C2 then R3C3. R1, C3, we get the equation 7, 8, 9 and 10. Now comparing equation 7 and 8, we will get equation 11. Similarly, we compare the equation 8 and 9, we get the equation 12. S12 is equal to S34, S14 is equal to S23. Now, we assume that S12 is real and positive. So, S12 yes, is equal to S34 yes, is equal to P. That is equal to S34 yes, complex conjugate. These are all uh, equal to P. Now, we substitute the equations 13 into equation 10. We get S yes, complex conjugate of S23 is equal to minus JQ. 
S23 is equal to J cube. Now we replace all those things in the equation uh, of a scattering matrix. We get the final scattering matrix S is equal to 0, P, 0, J cube, P, 0, J cube, 0, 0, J cube, 0, P, J cube, 0, P, 0. Equation 16 represents the scattering matrix of a directional coupler. Here I have listed some of the applications of directional coupler. Generally, it is used for frequency measurement, signal leveling, reflection coefficient measurement, signal sampling, signal injection, and also used to measure incident and reflected power to determine VSWR. I hope you would understand the working principle, S yes, parameters of directional coupler. Thank you.